It is Friday. It is July 4th. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Making news today. Israeli authorities are on high alert, bracing for more violence in Jerusalem. There's widespread anger over the killing of a 16-year-old Palestinian boy. Mohammed Abu Qadair was abducted and killed on his way to prayers. His family are expecting to receive his body to bury later today. There are concerns the funeral could spark further unrest. At least 10 Palestinian protesters were injured in clashes with police on Thursday. The death of the Palestinian boy appears appears to have been a revenge killing in response to the murders of three Israeli boys. But Israeli police are still trying to determine who killed him and why. The Israeli teens were abducted and found dead in the West Bank on Monday. The uncle of one of the teenagers is urging both sides not to retaliate. We call and urge everyone to continue to show this reason in what we call for. Despite the calls for calm, anger has spilled out onto the streets in recent days. The murders have inflamed tensions in, in a region already on a knife edge. CNN senior international correspondent Ben Wiedemann has more. Israeli police rush Palestinian protesters in the Jerusalem suburb of Shafat as clashes rage for the second day running. The Sunni Muslim militant group ISIS is sweeping up more land in Syria. A UK-based monitoring group says ISIS has captured Syria's largest oil field. It's located in Deir Ezzor province, northeast of al Mayadeen. Human rights observers say the oil field was seized along with several villages on the Euphrates River. Iraq's capital, meanwhile, is reeling from deadly bombings on Thursday. It's not clear if the perpetrators are tied to ISIS. Security there is already on high alert and anti-terrorism squads are scanning the streets for any risks. Nem al-Bagir spent the day with one of those units in Baghdad as they work to secure the capital. The enemy within. A daily threat in the Iraqi capital. Some of the other stories that we're following here at CNN News Center. Andy Coulson will be sentenced today in Britain's phone hacking case. The former aide to Prime Minister David Cameron is among five people convicted and face up to two years in jail. The scandal brought down London's News of the World tabloid. The murder trial of Oscar Pistorius is winding down. The final defense witness took the stand on Thursday. The sports doctor spoke about the athlete's disability and frame of mind at the time he killed Reba Steen camp. The trial has adjourned until Monday when the same witness will be back on the stand. Along the U.S. East Coast, Hurricane Arthur has grown to a Category 2 storm. Strong winds whipped up the waves as it made landfall over North Carolina. Nearly 18,000 homes lost power. CNN's Renee Marsh tells us what conditions were like late Thursday. At this hour, Hurricane Arthur is now making landfall here in coastal Atlantic North Carolina. Beach. Well, meteorologist Ivan Cabrera is at the World Weather Center with the latest on Arthur. So, Ivan, we're looking at the early hours of Friday morning, Independence Day. Certainly not the kind of weather that uh, bodes well for barbecues and any sort of parades, at least on the East Coast. Yeah, no question about it. And in fact, this has now been going on since 11.15 Eastern time when it made uh, uh, landfall Very across. Closely. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, Manita Rajpal, enjoy your long weekend. Thank you very much for that, Ivan. I appreciate that. You are watching CNN News Center. In less than eight hours' time, France takes on Germany in the first of eight quarterfinal matches. A look at how both sides are getting ready after the break. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. I'm Monita Rajpal. Firefighters in Brazil say at least one person has died after a bridge gave way in the city of Belo Horizonte. Images posted online show the destruction. A bus and several other vehicles were crushed yeah. under the concrete. But the, the games go on. After two rest days, the World Cup quarterfinals begin later today in Brazil. The first of two matches features European powers and former World Cup champs France and Germany. France are seeking their first semi-final appearance since 2000. 2006. Frederick Pleitgen has more on the preparations at the Maracanã. It will be a purely European duel here in the quarterfinal in the Maracanã Stadium in Rio de Janeiro. At least one tipster isn't worried by uh, Colombia's recent good run of form. The 
turtle swimming into the pool there is called Big Head. He's thought to be able to predict football in their first match. I guess that's what you call animal instinct. I guess he's replacing the octopus, remember that? Um, anyway, well, we are getting to the business end of things at the World Cup in Brazil, and it is the same story at Wimbledon. The last four men standing will soon be playing in the semifinals. We already know who will play in the ladies' final on Saturday. Christina McFarlane has the latest from the All England Club. The women's semi-final here at Wimbledon brought a chance to see a new generation in action. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Just ahead, we look at one of the most iconic features of Hong Kong's cityscape, neon signs and the struggle to preserve a dying craft. New Center live from Hong Kong. Love him or hate him, Hong Kong's skyline wouldn't be the same without its famous neon signs. But one day, those bright lights may be just a dim memory. Christy Lou Stout met one man determined to preserve these signs, and with them, a key part of Hong Kong's history. Layers and layers of neon signs for restaurants, banks, boutiques, all Hong Kong. And we have our own work of art here. CNN now has its own little piece of Hong Kong history. Lao Wan, who you just saw in that story, made this neon sign for us. It took the 75-year-old master craftsman just about an hour to put it all together. You've been watching CNN News Center. I'm Monita Rajpal, live at CNN Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us. I'll update you the news headlines in just a few minutes.